three days of hearings are underway in Winnipeg to settle a lawsuit. It's involved, involving what used to be known as Indian Day schools. The class action suit was filed against the federal government a decade ago. If finalized, the plan would provide payouts of between $10,000 and $200,000 to survivors of abuse at these federally funded schools. It's estimated that up to 200,000 Indigenous children attended the day schools between the late 1800s and the 1970s. After years of keeping silent, Inuit from Igluluk, Nunavut, are now speaking out about skin graft experiments performed on them in the 60s and 70s. The survivors say that they did not consent to these tests and they were not given any explanations. The CBC's Kieran Oudzorn has been investigating the story and Kieran joins me here in Toronto. Kieran, first of all, what if, what's their story? What have you heard from the survivors? Hi, Carol. Yeah, so for this story, I talked to two survivors, uh, Lazari Utak, who's an interpreter translator living in Igluluk, and Paul Kwasa. Now, Kwasa's name might be familiar. He was actually the former premier of Nunavut, as well as one of the signatories from the Nunavut Land Claims Agreement. And both men told me the same story. They told me that in the late 60s, early 70s, just a huge amount of researchers were coming to Igluluk doing a variety of tests. They would uh, test to see how a large in Inuit skulls were, how well they could uh, withstand the cold, and they also did a series of very invasive medical tests, these skin grafts. That's where they cut skin off the arms of one Inuit person uh, and attached it to another person. Now, uh, they said that they didn't know why these tests were being done. It's been more than uh, or nearly 50 years now, uh, and neither men, uh, men were ever informed uh, who had done the tests or why, uh, why they had been done or, or what the issues were around it. Okay. A little kind of circle or knife in a or blade where they would just start twisting it and then you could see the skin uh, you know being cut in a circle and they took pieces of our skin from another person and then they would put them on onto ours also was really adamant that there wasn't any consent, that he never gave any consent at any time. Uh, and he says that uh, he shared the skin with his cousin and his uncle. Um, and he was saying that uh, what he had done was uh, he was never given any kind of follow-up. Uh, and it's been several years since that happened. Okay, and what did you discover, Kieran, about why these experiments were conducted? Right, okay, so we did a little bit of research into this and uh, we were able to dig up this book. It's from 2005. Uh, it was written by Dr. John B. Dossiter, and he's a celebrated medical uh, practitioner here in Canada. He received the Order of Canada in 1994. Uh, and in his memoir, uh, he, he was working for the University of Alberta back in the 1970s. And in his memoir, he talked about how in 1972, he traveled to Igluluk and did a series of skin grafts on Inuit. Now, he and his colleagues were trying to understand why some uh, skin grafts worked and others failed. Uh, and, uh, and they wanted to test their theories on a isolated human population. Now, uh, this was happening in wow. 1972. Uh, he says that he did get consent for his work there. Uh, he said that he got what he called community consent, which is what they did is they, they had a, a man uh, who could speak some Inukitu, he wasn't Inuk, uh, and he spoke with some of the elders and got the go-ahead from, uh, from them. Now, Kwasa didn't know any of this information uh, when we were interviewing him, when we sat down with him, and uh, when we talked to him uh, and told him these details, uh, this was his first response. We're not animals. We're not. Uh, we're we're another human being that needs respect. Now, Kwasa pushed back pretty strongly against what Dossiter wrote about in his book. He said first that uh, he questioned uh, what was actually explained in Inukti to uh, to the people, to the elders. He also really dismissed the idea that elders could unilaterally provide consent uh, for other people for invasive medical procedures. Now, both. Uh, Utak and Kwasa said that they totally disagreed with what happened. Uh, but also interestingly, uh, Dossiter uh, also uh, felt uh, differently over time. In his memoir, he reflected on the ethics of his research and he ultimately concluded that uh, they hadn't gone far enough to get meaningful consent from the people they were researching on. But both Kwasa and Utak said that he's never tried to reach out or to apologize or to engage with them. Mm. Now, the two men, as well as some more, uh, maybe up to 10 people are working with a uh, uh, Edmonton-based law firm 
uh, to potentially seek damages or an apology. Mm. Um, we reached out to Dr. Dossiter. He's still alive. He's in his 90s. He uh, declined to be part of the story. So did the, the Departments of uh, Indigenous Services. Uh, Health Canada also uh, declined. They said that uh, it wasn't their place to speak to this. Uh, the University of Alberta, where Dossiter was working at the time, did write back to us. Uh, they said in an email that in 1972 they didn't have a, a robust uh, overview for research on human con uh, uh, experiments. Humans, yeah, human yep. experiments. And uh, and what they said was that if the research was done now, it would be done very differently. Uh, I pushed back a little bit on them. I, I was asking, uh, you know, what, what, what was their response to people who were saying that research that was done by a University of Alberta employee, uh, that people were very upset with that. And their answer was that uh, no one's ever made any complaints to them. And that might have something to do with the fact that until we did this reporting, uh, neither Kwasa or Utak or anyone we've talked to knew that the University of Alberta was involved or that Dr. Dossiter was involved. So that might change in the future. There might be future complaints that we don't know. We're going to have to wait on that. Well, they know now. They do. CBC's Kieran Outsorn, thank you so much.